Happy and blessed Easter to you and your families. I'm on St. Jim Losanti, welcoming you back to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. Delighted to celebrate Easter Sunday with you. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To better celebrate Mass, we always look into our hearts and we confess our sins. For the times we have failed to love and appreciate and treasure the gift of life, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have failed to love the people in our lives, especially our family, as fully as Jesus loves us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we still mean to do but have not yet accomplished, the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that the risen Jesus Christ will raise us all up and will renew our lives. God our Father, by raising Christ your Son, you conquered the power of death, and you open for us the way that leads to eternal life. Let our celebration today, this Easter Sunday, raise us up and renew our lives by the Spirit that is within us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John had preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endures for ever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures for ever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. 
the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sacrifice, let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark. And she saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she went and ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. And then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and he believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. First, from all of us at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish, just a very, very happy and blessed Easter to you and to your families, hoping this day is perfect and a great opportunity to celebrate the incredible joy we should feel at the knowledge that the Jesus who suffered on Good Friday has been raised from the dead. And that with that comes the conquest of death and the promise for you and me who are believers of eternal life. Let's go to the readings that were given this Easter Sunday to talk a little bit about what they mean. We have St. Peter in the Acts of the Apostles, first of all, suggesting that if we believe in the risen Christ, there's a certain way we should now live our lives, that there should be some change, that we don't go on with the ordinary way we live our lives, we are renewed. And how are we renewed, he says, by doing good and healing all those who are oppressed. So this is a good beginning point for us to say, what do I do in my life that makes the life of other people better or happier? What do I do for those who are oppressed or hurting, those who have uh, seemingly nothing in their lives, those who have a, a real need for somebody to care, and can I be that caring person? We're told that if we really believe that this day Jesus has been raised from the dead and that our true home is in heaven, that it should change the way we live our lives and make us more aware of the fact that I am called every day of my life to do good and to heal and to lift the burden of those who are oppressed. And whether you consider those people who are oppressed to be uh, the poor, the lonely, the brokenhearted, the recently divorced, our friends and brothers in Ukraine, 
There are tons of people in the world who are carrying the burden of oppression. Our job is to help lift that burden. We ought to be Simon of Cyrene who helped Jesus to carry the cross. And there are so many people carrying so many crosses in this world. We are certainly much needed. And also in that first reading, listen to this from St. Peter. He was visible not to all, not to all the people, but to us. It reminds me recently one of the interviews we did on Personally Speaking was with the wonderful singer, actor, writer, uh, Pat Boone. Now, he's now 88 years old, but I asked the question because he seems to be such a conversant Christian. I mean, you can quote the Bible like you can't believe. So I said, Pat, you know, a lot of people don't have your faith. Was there ever a time in your 88 years where you, this very public, devout Christian, didn't have such strong faith? And he said, you know, he said, I went to Columbia University and I was surrounded by unbelievers uh, interestingly enough, we think of Pat as this kind of simple guy, you know, this uh, good, simple, white buck-wearing guy. But he actually was very smart, went to Columbia and graduated summa cum laude. He said, but when you're surrounded by all these unbelievers who are smart people, you say, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is nothing. M maybe all these things I've been given by my parents and my church, uh, maybe I was brainwashed early on. And he went through a period of having to examine, what do I really believe and is it true? And he said, so I went back to the Bible and I, I prayed and I studied and I looked at the life of Christ and I came to believe that what I had was not just something passed on to me by my church or by my family, but that I had been given the great gift of faith. And I think that's what St. Peter's referring to too. You and I are here celebrating this Mass, not just because it's a tradition, Catholics get together and celebrate Mass on Easter Sunday, but because we believe what happened on Easter Sunday is real, that Jesus died on the cross and is raised from the dead. And that, that promise to you and me that we're going to be raising ourselves with him to heaven is true. And I, I guess what I'm trying to get across is Peter says to us, not everybody, even in Jesus' own time, could see and understand the mystery of resurrection. But he said, for those of us who knew and loved him, it was real, and we did see him, and it was true because we have the gift of faith. So if you're here with me this morning believing, not just in the cultural holiday of Easter, but in the reality of Easter, that death is conquered, that Jesus is a man who makes very few promises, but when he makes a promise that death is vanquished, it's real and it's true and it's a reason to rejoice. And be glad, like Pat Boone said, I was delighted to find out I'm not just a believer because it's been passed to me, I'm a believer because I believe. I'm a believer because it's true. I'm a believer because the promises of Jesus are real. Let's go to that second reading, Paul to the Colossians. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. You know, if you really believe that today is true, that death is conquered, then you say, okay, whatever I am, I'm 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, I know there's a limit on my time here and that one day I'm going to go home to God. And if I know that that's my final destination, if I know I'm going to spend infinitely more time in, in eternal life in heaven than I'm going to spend on earth, then let me not focus so much on the stuff here. You know, worrying day in and day out about what's going on this week in my life, but rather have the bigger picture. I'm going to live my life fully and well, but always with my eye on the prize, which is eternal life. I'm not going to get so focused on all the things around me on earth that I forget to keep my eye on the final vision, that I'm going home to God, that heaven is real, and that you and I, God willing, are gonna celebrate with him eternal life. And keep that in mind, and I think it gives new perspective on all that we do. We don't hang on to anger so much, we don't hold a grudge, we don't say I gotta work out justice to people who've been unkind to me, but rather we say, I'm gonna be forgiving as my God is forgiving, because I'm going home to him who from the cross itself said, Father, forgive them. So I'm going to live my life in a disposition of forgiveness and love and generosity because I know my time here is limited, but my home in heaven is, God willing, always and forever. And finally to the gospel, this whole mystery of, of what Easter is, let me put it to you this way. I've shared with you the story of, of Joe Lukaszewski. I met Joe when I was 17 years old, and he became and has always been my very best friend. And then when he was 47, Joe developed a brain tumor, and we suffered together through that experience. And then just as he turned 48, he went home to God. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about him. But first, you know me and my 
inclination toward pictures. So this is me and Joe on our last vacation together. We went out to California, and for some reason he wanted to visit Alcatraz, the famous prison. So we took the ferry over from San Francisco, and we visited that notorious prison called Alcatraz. And actually, it was a great vacation because we didn't know at that point that in the next few months Joe would get sick and that that sickness would end in his death. But it was a great experience to be with this friend I treasured. But let me tell you about Joe. So we're in college, and there's another guy named Mark Giles, and he's huge. I mean, he's like 6'7", and a huge guy. And he was a big practical joker. So he sees me, who at that point was probably 130, 140 pounds, skinny little thing. And he comes up behind me, and he lifts me, and he literally twirls me around. That's how strong and big he was. Joe's across the cafeteria and sees me being spun and flies over. And even though Joe wasn't as big as Mark, he picks Mark up, who's holding me, and says, put Lasanti down. And Mark puts me down. Joe found the energy, the strength to do that. Where did it come from? It came from his absolute devotion to our friendship. Have you ever had somebody say to you, or did you feel about them, this person would literally give their life for me? This person would die for me? And that's what Joe was for me. He was the kind of friend who would have walked in front of a truck or taken a bullet for me. So deep was his love and friendship. Now, I try to, when I'm examining what Jesus is for me, Put it in the context of Joe, because I have some sense from Joe what it is to be a friend who is willing to die for another and who is willing to live for another. And that's what we're celebrating on Easter Sunday, a Jesus, a God, who loves us so much, always and forever, no matter what our sinful past, that he's literally on the cross willing to die for you and for me. But that's not all he does. It's important to be willing to say in generosity, I, I love you so much I would die for you. But it's as important to say, I love you enough that I would live for you. So I'm dealing with this couple this week and talking about their marriage and whether or not it's a, a strong marriage or needs some work. And the wife in her mind's eye goes back to a time when her husband lost his job and they were in a panic. You know, we have a mortgage to pay for, a bills to pay, we have kids, what are we going to do? And he says to her, you know, if I have to hold three jobs, if I have to wash floors, if I have to be a bartender, if I, whatever I have to do, I don't want you to worry because, yes, I lost my job, but I'm going to do whatever is necessary to take care of you and the children no matter what. And she talked about the fact that in that moment she breathed a sigh of relief knowing that he loved her and the children so much that he was willing not only obviously to die for her, but also to live for her, to hold those three jobs until they could get on their feet again, to do the generous, the selfless, the giving, such was his dedication to his wife and his children. Well, that's Jesus too. He not only teaches us the importance of love and being willing to die for us, but he also says, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to teach you how to live. And so the Gospels, the stories of Christ, the parables, they're all his way of saying, I teach you how to die for others, but I also teach you how to live for others. I teach you the very meaning of life. And that's what Easter is about, teaching us about the generosity of love that allows us to say, I love you so much, I'd be willing to lay down my life for you, and he does, but I love you so much that I'm willing to live for you. You guys who are out there watching this Mass, who live every day for your families, who go to work faithfully every day, who are patient and kind and loving, even in difficult situations because you love your family and you're willing to live for them, you are Easter joy made real. You love people enough to die for them, but also to live for them. And if you ever need a model, you need an inspiration, you need a role model, we've got the best of all. On Easter Sunday, we have a Jesus who says, I love you personally so much that I'm willing to die for you, but I love you so much I'm also willing to live for and with you. We do things a little differently on Easter Sunday. You know, we're not just going to recite the creed together, but I'm going to ask you about the creed in question and answer form. And after each question, I'm hoping you're going to say loud and clear, wherever you're watching this Mass, I do, to let our Lord know how much you truly, wonderfully do recommit yourself to the faith. Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him, especially at Easter, to this new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism 
when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully through living truly in his holy Catholic Church. So here are my questions, and please respond if you can by saying I do. My friends, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I, I do. do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I, I do. do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I, I do. do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. God, all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He's forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us ever faithful to our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. And now with confidence in the God who never stops loving us, we offer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer that all church leaders will be renewed in the ambition of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For a deeper unity among all Christians, as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the risen Christ may bless, guide, and protect all who serve in public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Anthony Di Giovanni, Joe Amarin, Kathy Orofino, Joseph Brennan, Frank Macchio, Kimberly Cusack, Monica Garcia, and Anne Rowan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, especially Bebs Mercado, Helen Sosa, Mertelina Morales, Paul Struzzeri, Joan Alton, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, the intention of Od Odette Samproof, Olga Mitchell, Gaspar and Jeanette Ingui, Patrice Brennan, Luigi Antonio Rosmini, Gemma Stampo Rosmini, the deceased members of the Polini and Rusciutti family, and Peter Lepotis and Patricia Avarello, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let me add a few intentions for those who are ill. I want to pray for a neighbor to our church, Olga. Olga was a regular at our Mass, but lately, because of ill health, has not been able to get here. Olga, praying for you. I also got a message from my friend Nancy. She asked me to pray for Barbara Romagnesi, as well as Keith Romagnesi. So that's mother and son. We're praying for them both and hoping for their well-being. Among those who are sick, I also pray for Peter Visconti, Bill Kershaw, Doug Ohoro, for Margaret Lasanti, for Barbara Turley, and baby Emily Quart. I pray for baby Penny Grace for Barbara Truglio, for Edith Consiglio, and Mary Littris, for Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer, I pray for all of those suffering addiction of any kind and for their freedom from addiction. Let me pray too for Kevin Shields, for Michael Cataldi, for George Gill, for Michael Cardone, for Charlene Eisencraft and Noah Torelli, for Laura Lishan, Georgie Ritter, Gary Hudson, Al and Angelo Clementi. I pray for Michael Campagna and for Laura Elizabeth Steele, for Anthony Postorino and for Jody, his wife. I pray for Dennis Sweeney, Bob Talasco, my dear friend Vern, Amelia Alaka, Rita Pizzi, Marilyn Segulo, and for Sean McGrail. Let me pray too for Steve Gagliardi. I pray for Ronald Butler, for uh, Byron DeMilo. I pray as well for uh, Russell Castro Giovanni, for Dorothy, who's the mom, to Sheila Blanchard, and for Kelly Schultz. I pray for Cara Mooney McElderry as well as for Loretta Sweeney. Let me pray for baby Henry Grayson, for Roseanne Simone, Barbara Simone. I pray for Dave Walsh, 
Pray for Anthony Scotto and Jim Harmon, for my dear friend Judge Tony Polanga, and for Heidi Ignoski and Van Tutwiler, always praying for my mom Cecilia, for Leanne Lasanti, my cousin, for Vita D'Amico, for Jim Barr and Ron Citrano, for Howie Pomerantz, as well as for Anthony Kremi. Let me pray for Nancy Lang and Joan Donovan, for Dean McDonald, Marilyn Arbogast, Nancy Palumbo. Nancy, I got a beautiful video from you. I'm so glad that you were kind enough to send a video singing happy birthday. You sound wonderful. I pray for Pat McTaggart, Melissa Bergman, Ann Mendes, Nick Castellano, Jorge Clemente, Anthony Ponte, Emma Nicole, for Thomas Brown. I pray as well for baby Owen Andrews. Oh, I pray for Kathy Bordingo. Kathy, I know this has been a tough week for you, sending special prayers your way and asking all my friends to pray for Kathy. I pray for Brian Bronzini, for Tommy Swengross, for Lacey Ward, for Michael Messina, for Drew Layton, Mary and Pat Sears, Billy Campanaro, Lou Imperioli. Good news for Lou that he is finally cancer free. I pray for Kathy Orofino, for Alina Patricia McGrail, for Edith Consiglio, and for Kimberly Cusack. For Michael and Zachary Charnover, Marion Barone, Joey Silvestro. I pray too for Millie Bolando and Mary Rao. For Marie Tenay and Bill Franca. For Bella Glauda and Dennis M. Dowd. For Jennifer Murphy, Dennis Donovan, Jamie Scotto, Carly Fregola, John O'Brien, and for Joseph Grafeo. Among those who are sick, I pray with thanksgiving for the continued well being of my friend Michelle DeHart out in Michigan. For Larry Lewis, for Joseph Sardone, for Janet Paradiso, for Maria Cariola. I pray as well for Amy Seifert, and I pray for Jenny Chmielewski. Let me pray too for uh, all the members of the Caravona family in Norwalk, California. I wanna to pray too for the safety and well-being of all of our men and women in the armed forces, especially those who have now been stationed in Eastern Europe to stand against the Russian oppression. For their well-being and for the freedom of all of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, I pray as well. And then among those who have died, I'm remembering Sofia Maglione, for Nicholas Delario, I pray for Bill Kelly, and praying for Nicholas, I pray for uh, his dear wife as well. I pray for Catherine and William Donovan, for Richard Rosemarin and Billy and Michael Sarasoli. Pray for Dawn Spitali, Lorraine, and Ray Campbell. Pray for Nicholas and Sally Cordero, Corinne Locke, John, Maureen, and Ann Raber, Joseph McGrath, Mary and Ed Raber, Arlene Wolfarth, and Chuck DeHart. I pray for John Slade and Mary and Joseph Monopoly. For John and Alma Kappa, Fel Morali, Michael Manzella, John Neeson, Kenny Bolando. Pray for Christina Formato and Cynthia Prague. For Carolyn Dodaro, Gaetano Sal, and Angelo Emelo. Anthony Preziosi, Kevin Brown, Pauline Romano, Ed and June Jandovitz, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien. For Sam and Rose Pecora. For Irene Romano and John Simone. I pray for Marjorie Geary and for Rocco Pasola. Let me pray for Nick Sabo, for Nicholas James Albertson. I pray as well for uh, Luigi Antonio Rosmini, for Gemma Stempa Rosmini, for Ernie Meditz, for Nancy Murphy, for Elizabeth Perry Sobel. I pray as well for Kevin Bayon. Let me pray for Anna Maria Tanay, for Billy Taylor, for Monica Kerrison. My dear husband Ray is a very, very good friend, and I know he loves and still prays for his wonderful wife, Monica, a great lady. I pray for Robbie and, and Jim Purick, for Regina Robinson, for Joan and John Donnelly, for Jimmy Soldo and Richard Jackal, for Henry Meyer, for Colin and Tommy Ryan, Barry Champney, Eleanor Mazzi, Monsignor John Alessandro, Brian Hussey, and his dear, dear daughter, Suzanne Scanio, for Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Ronald Chiappo, Leon Sherman Jr., Kate Kelly, Marie Sicolo, Norbert Bobby Gomez, Connie and Sal Cusimano, Ted Scorcia, Jerry Monk, Mike Scorcia, Vincent Castoria Jr., Thomas O'Shea, Dave Robin, Matthew Toriello, and Marie Austin, for Emily LaFasso and Vita Palmieri, for Kathleen Smith and John Arturi, for Raymond Kennedy, for Connor and Will Robles, and Mary Ohodo. I pray for Luigi Conti, Tracy Wachowski, Dale Louise Odom. Pray for Elmer Schantz and Pat Sestar, Alex Haliasas and Joe and Marion Bacigalupo, Marvin Klein and Peggy Barr, Jerry and Edward Casal, John McMacken, Raymond Hussey, Judge Don Belfi. Pray for my dad, Nicholas. Pray as well for Joe and Joan Largan. I want to pray for Tino DiBello, Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Marks, Father Tim Hurton, 
Paul Sushut and all the deceased members of the Sushut family, Fred Ed Alma, Gary and Mike Scorcia, Marilyn Salonia, Constance Polio, Nick Martone, Jerry and Michael Pangalo, Captain Tim Murray, Dottie Lauer, Norma Calabrese, uh, John Glauda, Joseph Lovett, Bishop John McGann. I pray for Marie Casavecchi and Carol Linda Vall. I pray for Scotty and Nina Passarelli, for Bob and Pat Caliban. I pray for Joe and Peggy Bauman, for Tom Sully O'Sullivan, and for Bishop Gerald Ryan. I pray for Lorenzo Bronzini, for Joseph P. Callahan, for Lynn Lane and Ed Birch, for Mike Goff, as well as for Virginia Kegney and Sister Mary Angela Buser BVM. I pray for Peter Gannon and Margaret and Katie O'Connor, for Ben Julik, Tommy Engelhart, Victor and Lillian, Bobby and Marge, Tom and Helen, Barlow and Ethel. I pray for Edward Riker, Danny Carlson, Luke Johnson, Evelyn Lalicki. I pray for Christopher Albert Marco, for Frank Kilgannon, for P.J. O'Rourke, for Robert and Joan Cook, for Ernie Metz, Anna Gomes, Paul Struzzieri, Anna and Peter Canal. I pray for Leonardo Playa, for Donato Forlenza, for Aniello Ferrara, for Christine Lisa, and for Marie Hoyecki. I pray for Marion Harrington, for Marie Gail Penny, and for Margaret Freeland. I pray for Kevin Bayon. Pray as well for Michael A. Diorio. I pray for Captain John Robert Minatoli, Father Dennis Wheatley, OFM. I pray for Louise McNeil, for Lena Lasanti, for Mary Uli, for Genevieve Minatoli, for Virginia Dennert. I pray too for, among those who have died, Barbara and Joseph Miller, James V. Aquaviva, for Betty Moore, for Donald J. Winkler. Pray for Christopher Albert Marco, as well as for Richard Fasano, Christopher Laybourne, Adina Placido, Helen K. Dash, for Bruna Sopa, for dear Jack Carroll. I pray for Madeline Alari and Anna Malandro, for James Zidi, for Carmela Lobalita, Labalita, for Scott Schneider, for Mindy Singer, for Lorraine DeRico, for Joseph Nestor Mondello, for Joseph Paul Wallweber. I pray for Vernon Oliver Harmon, and among those who have died as well, let me mention, if I can, a couple of names that just came into me today and are important to mention. A beautiful young girl, I want to pray for, um, hold on a second, don't go, don't go away, for Mary Carol Rachalski, uh, a young girl who battled cancer and went home to God. Beautiful, beautiful Mary Carol. And then I received this, which is important. Dear Monsignor Jim, I recently joined a support group of eight men, all who have lost a child. Could you please add our children to your prayer list? Sincerely, Joe. Addison De Los Santos, Katie Dyer, Daniel DeSalvo, Christina Formato, Garrett Letterman, Caitlin Mendoza, Joseph Rera, Colin Ryan, Thomas Ryan. And for all the people we love who have gone from this world to the next, that they might know the happiness of heaven and that resurrection is real, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As always, I pray for first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMTs. I pray for our doctors and nurses and all those who continue to fight against COVID. I want to pray especially for groups that are trying to help our friends in Ukraine, especially Doctors Without Borders and Catholic Relief Services and aid to the church in need. And I pray for a final victory for those free people of Ukraine who are fighting for their freedom. You have private intentions and so do I. Let's take all these intentions and give them to the Mother of God. As together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me 
from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Almighty God, may the sacrifice we offer take away the sins of all of us whom you enlighten with the Christian faith. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give thanks and praise to you through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter day, when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world, and by dying he destroyed our death, and by rising he restored us to eternal life. So now with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your power and we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us, so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you, and send forth the power of your spirit, so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth, in an everlasting sign of your loving covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast in the company of his friends and disciples. And so, while they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness. He gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. This in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection, and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to give us all the fullness of joy. Therefore we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those who have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one body and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. 
Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence to share in the lives of the saints in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in the company, too, of all of our departed brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, all those people who have died and gone before us, we hope to see again in the kingdom of heaven. Let's pause to remember them now and commend them to God's tender mercy. And then, freed from every shadow of death, we shall take our place in the new creation, and we shall give you thanks with and through Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. friend Victor Starks is back with us today to uh, guide us through the beautiful version of, of uh, Gounod's Lord, our, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. So as he sings the Our Father, if you want to, sing with him, but especially in your heart, pray that all the words that Jesus taught us in this prayer might be truly lived in your life and in mine. Let's listen to Victor sing the Our Father. temptation, but deliver us from
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of uh, practical announcements. Um, one is to say thank you. Remember last week I mentioned that if you particularly wanted to support us in staying online, that you might uh, send us help to our Lady of Lourdes Media Project, and many of you did. So grateful to you for that. Also, you know, during uh, Lent we have many opportunities for confession, and uh, especially during this past Holy Week, lots of people went. But some people probably meant to go, but never got around to it. So at least in our parish of Our Lady of Lourdes, I'm happy to say that next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, and we'll talk a lot about what that means, the mercy of God. But we're going to offer an opportunity for confession, especially next weekend, to celebrate the mercy of God mediated through divine mercy, namely the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So if you didn't get a chance to go during the holy season of Lent or during Holy Week, just know there's another opportunity to go to confession. What better time to go then uh, next weekend, Divine Mercy Sunday. So keep that in mind. Um, also, I want to speak on behalf of Father Andy, Father Kevin, Father Anthony, and all the priests and deacons of our parish and wishing you and your family a blessed, a happy, a healthy, holy time this Easter Sunday. And as always, I need to mention, I don't want you to miss an opportunity to watch personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti, either to listen to it on uh, Sirius Satellite Radio on uh, the Catholic Channel, Channel 129, where they air it three times on Sunday, or you can go to YouTube on your computer and punch in personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti, and please hit like and subscribe. But it's important. Here's a couple of upcoming guests I thought I'd want to mention. Um, Shula Hensley, who's one of the stars of Music Man, a great Broadway actor and a Tony Award winning actor, talks about his family and his faith. Then after that, Jennifer Samard, she's presently on Broadway in a musical called Company. Uh, more interestingly, she was nominated for a Tony for playing a nun in a musical called Disaster, and she herself is a, a good Catholic gal. And then following that, as I mentioned in the homily, is Pat Boone, the great icon of music in the movies. And then following him is William P. Barr, the former Attorney General under both President uh, George H.W. Bush and President Donald Trump. 
uh, who's written a powerful new book, but he also talks very importantly about his Catholic faith and what it means to him, Attorney General Barr. So good people coming up to talk. I hope you'll join us on Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. And again, blessed, happy, joyous Easter to you and to your whole family, and let's pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, by this holy sacrifice, may we always remain one with your Son, Jesus Christ, whose body and blood we share. He has conquered death, and he truly is our Lord, now and forever. Amen. And if you would please bow down your heads for our Easter blessing. Lord, protect your people always, that they may be free from every evil, and that they might, all of us, serve you, Lord, with all our hearts. And to that we say, Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you and your families. This I ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. All on earth with angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye hearts and earth reply. Alleluia. Jesus Christ the King.